Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to our channel, Dayton Squad. My name is Addy. So in today's video is the must-have travel document requirements when you travel to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic. So we will be discussing per category travelers to the Philippines. Details coming well. So if you have been following this channel, I have uploaded a video two days ago on who can enter the Philippines starting July 1st of 2021. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the travel document requirements that the Philippine government require to all travelers permitted to enter the Philippines for the month of July 2021. So our first category are for Filipino citizens. What are the documents that you guys need to present or submit upon check-in at the airport and when you do the immigration process when you arrive in the Philippines? So for Filipino citizens residing abroad, you are a permanent resident of a particular country like the United States. You will need your valid Philippine passport and your green card. So these are the documents that you need to present before check-in because airlines check these documents before you guys are allowed to board the aircraft. And this will also be checked again during the immigration process when you arrive in Manila. If you are a dual citizen, you have naturalized abroad and applied for dual citizenship, you will need to present your foreign passport as well as your valid Philippine passport. Meaning you have already applied your Philippine passport, your new Philippine passport after you have become a dual citizen. Your previous Philippine passport before you became a dual citizen will be null and void. So please take note of that. Because others would say, hey, I applied for naturalization, then I became a dual citizen, but my Philippine passport is still not expired. Is that valid? The answer to that is no. Because when you became a naturalized citizen of a different country, any passport you are holding expired on unexpired is already now in void now when you became a dual citizen just like the philippines recognizes dual citizenship you have to apply again for new philippine passport so if you are a dual citizen traveling to the philippines you need to have your foreign passport and your valid philippine passport just in case you have not applied for philippine passport yet you can present your dual citizenship paperwork. These are the documents given to you during your oath taking when you became a dual citizen. For foreign spouses and foreign children of Filipino citizens traveling together to the Philippines, you will need to bring your marriage certificate and the birth certificate of your kids respectively. They will check this upon check-in at the airline and also will be checked during your immigration process to the Philippines. The foreign spouses and foreign children of a Filipino national doesn't need to have a visa when entering the Philippines as long as you are traveling with the Filipino national. If not traveling with the Filipino national, we will discuss that on our third category. But for Filipino citizens traveling with foreign spouses and foreign children, they don't need to secure a 9A visa or an entry exemption document anymore. As long as, please take note, as long as you guys are traveling together with the Filipino national wife. So our second category are for former Filipinos or balikbayans. These type of traveler are Filipino national, went abroad, have naturalized abroad, 
but did not apply for dual citizenship. They are still allowed to enter the Philippines with the following travel document requirements. You will need to present your foreign passport, but you have to have your old Philippine passport or your PSA issued birth certificate because you need to have a proof that you are a former Filipino before. Without this document, you may not be allowed to board the aircraft. But also take note, Balikbayans or former Filipinos are only recognized to some countries. Not all are recognized by this. So if you need the list of countries that recognizes Balik Bayans from Executive Order 408, we have a video on that on our travel update videos. So to those Balik Bayans or former Filipinos, make sure you have your old Philippine passport or PSA issued birth certificate to be allowed entry into the Philippines along with your foreign passport. If the foreign spouse and foreign children are traveling with a former Filipino national or balikbayans, they are also allowed and they don't need to secure a visa upon entry into the Philippines. You need to have the marriage certificate along with the birth certificate of your children respectively. As long as, please take note, as long as you guys are traveling with a former Filipino national or balikbayan. Our third category are foreign nationals with valid and existing visa. So these are foreign nationals that still have their visas with them still valid upon entry into the Philippines. So this applies to foreign spouses of Filipino national who are abroad but the wife and the kids are already in the Philippines. So to those foreign spouses who wants to travel to the Philippines alone, you need to secure a 9A visa and an entry exemption document. I will be making a video on how to secure the entry exemption document because we have subscribers that have actually secured this document and nice enough to send me the process, all the documents that they have submitted to secure this particular document. So please keep an eye on that video. But if you are a foreign spouse, wants to travel to the Philippines, to be with your family, your Filipino wife, and your kids, you need to secure a 9A visa and an entry exemption document at the nearest Philippine consulate abroad or where you are under the jurisdiction with. Another foreign national who are allowed to enter the Philippines are the 13A visa holders. These are foreign nationals that are resident of the Philippines. They have the resident card or what they so-called the ACR I card. So you guys are allowed to enter the Philippines as long as your visas are valid and existing upon entry plus your ACR I card. You guys are allowed to enter for the month of July. So 13A visa, you are one of those permitted travelers to the Philippines. Another category who are allowed to enter the Philippines for the month of July are the SRRV visa holder. These are special retirees visa to those who are retiring to the Philippines before they require the entry exemption document for this particular visa holder but this time they have lifted that. You don't need to have that particular document anymore for SRRV visa holder. So all you need is your foreign passport, SRRV, and if you are married to a Filipino national, make sure to bring your marriage certificate. So please take note, those foreign nationals that are permitted to enter the Philippines with valid and existing visa and married to a Filipino national, make sure that you bring with you your marriage certificate because this will be checked by the airline and this will also be checked during your immigration process in the Philippines when you arrive. So let's discuss these general requirements posted by the Bureau of Immigration to be presented by travelers upon entry into the Philippines. 
must not come or must not have travel history within the last 14 days from countries not allowed to enter the Philippines except Filipinos who are part of government or non-government repatriation efforts. So what they mean by this are those travelers coming from the travel ban countries. We have seven countries that are on travel ban at the moment or until July 15 of 2021. So if you guys are coming from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Oman, and United Arab Emirates, unfortunately, you guys are not allowed to enter the Philippines yet, even if you are a Filipino citizen, unless you are part of the repatriation program of the Philippine government. And if you are a traveler also with a travel history for the last 14 days from these countries that I mentioned, you guys are still not allowed to enter the Philippines unless the travel ban is lifted. Another general requirement to keep in mind, must present a confirmed booking for at least 10 days in an accredited quarantine or hotel or facility or 7 days for passengers who are fully vaccinated and stayed in green countries as determined by the DOH, except diplomats coming from covered countries. So we have already posted this green list from countries and jurisdiction that has low risk cases of COVID-19. So if you guys are coming from these 57 countries, fully vaccinated, your quarantine will be shortened, which is only seven days. But to those who are not part of the green countries and jurisdiction, you will have to present a 10-day hotel booking confirmation upon check-in into the airline and upon entry into the Philippines. So to those fully vaccinated coming from countries that were not listed on the green list, from the DOH, unfortunately, your quarantine will be 10 days. So these are the Bureau of Immigration Travel Guidelines to be presented by travelers upon arrival into the Philippines for the month of July. So please take note of these travel document requirements. Make sure you have these on hand before you travel to the Philippines because if you don't have a certain document, you may not be allowed entry into the Philippines or worse, you may not be allowed to board the aircraft going to the Philippines. So please take note, get these documents handy and make sure that you double check before you head to the Philippines during the time of the pandemic. So this is our quick update for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family whom you know that can use this video as reference. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We do travel updates and if you are not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you will be notified on updates like this. And to our subscribers and new subscribers, thank you, thank you so much for the continued support and trust to our channel Dayton Squad. I hope to see you guys on our next travel update. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless everyone. Bye.